once or twice. These are our Eid. But it is a fast train because once we reach there, as the Quran says, we will look back on this life. كَأَنَّمْ يَلْبَثُوا إِلَّا سَاعَةً مِنَ النَّهَارِ يَتَعَرَفُونَ بَيْنَهُمْ As if we lived in this earth only just one hour. All our years here would be like an hour to get to know one another. The stations where we stop are useful because it is an opportunity to raise some questions, some key questions about our lives and our mission here on earth. What exactly is our role as the trustees of Allah on this earth, which is a sign of dignity. Where is that train taking us? And the answer comes in the Quran. Unto Allah is the final destination. That is the destination of the fast train. The Quran also says everyone and everything is returning back to Allah. The Quran says, كل من عليها فان ويبقى وجه ربك ذو الجلال والإكرام Everything on earth will perish and remains only the presence of your Lord. What will happen when we reach the destination? Did we advance something that would help us at that destination? Did we neglect our duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we'll be, and I seek refuge of Allah, of being among those quoted in the Quran as saying when they reach Allah, say, woe to me, woe to me for the neglect I had in terms of the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I was taking it for mockery, taking this life and the commands of Allah for mockery. How can we benefit from that station today to renew our faith in Allah, to strengthen our resolve and to pray to Allah, Oh Allah, the one who connects those who are disconnected from you, please connect with us. Help us connect with you. Are we taking that station to have a resolve today to be careful about performing our five daily prayers, to be careful about Jum'ah prayer, which is absolutely essential for Muslims, and also to be observant of all other basic pillars of Islam, whether it's zakah, fasting, or hajj, to make a resolve, to try to avoid at least the major sins, at least at the very bare minimum that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the evil that we are exposed to and are tempted to partake of. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of His mercy says in the Quran, in the translation of meaning, if you avoid the major things that has been forbidden to you, Allah will forgive your sins, not only forgive your sins, look at this. We'll let you have an honorable entry that is in paradise in the day of judgment, inshallah. To make a resolve today, to extend the hand of help and support to all our brothers and sisters in Islam and in humanity, because Islam is mercy unto the whole universe. Those who have been oppressed, those who have been under siege, inhuman siege, while the world is looking the other way, everywhere, to feel their pain and to share their hopes. To have a resolve today, to compete with one another, not in having more money or more children, but to compete with one another in doing good, and avoid evil. To be among those who love to meet Allah so that Allah loves to meet them and enter them into His mercy and pleasure. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to join us all in goodness in this life and the hereafter and gather us around the pond of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to raise us in the day of judgment in the company of the prophets, the truthful the martyrs, the pious, and what a wonderful and great company. Before I come to the final dua, you are all aware of the desperate need for funds at least to complete the shell.
Well, good morning, and, and thank you very much for listening to me. Um, on behalf of uh, Daryl Dexter and the government of Nova Scotia and the Office of uh, Immigration, um, I want to congratulate you and thank you for inviting me uh, today. Uh, it's a great day of rejoicing and, and happiness, and uh, congratulations on successfully finishing this uh, great period of worship, of fasting, and, uh, and reflection. Uh, today brings us an opportunity to reach out to our batteries, uh, to remember our friends and our neighbors and our families, and to remember our obligations to each other, particularly the poor, and to fight for justice and equality in our everyday lives. It's great to see so many people here. It's great to see so many families here. Uh, it's great to see my colleague, uh, Imam Jamal Badway, here. He's, I, I can't think of anyone who embodies the whole spirit of this celebration uh, than my colleague. He's devoted so much of his life and so much of his talents uh, to promoting an understanding of, of, of our faith, uh, of promoting tolerance for each other, of building bridges with interfaith community. And I salute him on behalf of the government of Nova Scotia. I thank you for the great work he's doing here in building our communities. Uh, we also want to say that, you know, recently the Office of Immigration has embarked on a, on a policy of bringing, of reuniting families, of allowing families to bring adult children here in particular. It's part of our commitment to broadening the base of bringing people here who will help strengthen our families and will help strengthen our, our communities. In any case, on, on behalf of the government of Nova Scotia, I want to congratulate you and thank you for your great contributions to, to, to our spiritual lives and to our communities. And I also want to thank, uh, that, that, to, thank, to thank uh, I'd like to thank uh, um, my, my uh, colleague on the advisory board, uh, Taleb Abidali, who helped us uh, developed the immigration strategy five years ago, who serves on the Immigrant Advisory Committee. We are embarking on a new immigration strategy and we really do need your help if we are going to meet our commitment to doubling our immigration targets and broadening our base. In any case, uh, congratulations on the celebration of Aid. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and peace. Thank you. Thank you very much.